welcome to this review of my Acer KB101A. This is one of my most requested review reduxes and I've been wanting to do it for a long time because this keyboard is quite special to me. I love taking this thing to meetups where it's <laughs> invariably very well received. The original video was my 11th ever review and the first video to kind of kick off and get a lot of views as before that I had almost no viewers. Therefore it was basically my first big video and it's possibly the one I'm still most well known for. In fact it might be my most well known keyboard, by now it feels become almost synonymous with me. It's also still my favourite keyboard, even though I have keyboards that are almost objectively better. I avoid using it as much as possible because I don't want to damage it or wear it out somehow, although it appears in a review occasionally for a comparison. I don't even refer to it as the KB101A anymore, it's just the Acer to me now. <laughs> It's also in every video nowadays because the typing sounds from the intro were recorded from it, but we'll get back to that later. I got it in a trade for a Cherry G80 3000 with double shot keycaps like this that I got from the uni for free, and I didn't even pay for the shipping so this keyboard cost me exactly zipsky, arguably making it my best deal so far. The KB101A is, to my knowledge, the first keyboard we know of from Acer, which makes sense because Acer wasn't called that until 1987, which is the time when they were making this keyboard, and they only made it for a short while before they phased it out in favour of the later but fairly similar 6011 series. The most important difference between the two was that the 6011 was a white Alps board, while most KB101As that have been spotted so far were blue Alps boards, and that is also immediately why it's a fairly well-known model, despite being quite uncommon. It's also extremely expensive nowadays, and this appears to have been because of that original video, after which the price of Blue Alps keyboards skyrocketed. These used to fetch maybe $80 to $100 for a good one when I first started doing these videos, and at the Apex 1KB101A fetched as much as $755, and in a fit of extreme irony, that was one of the few White Alps models as well. <laughs> anyway, let's start straight away with the big price, the switches. Blue Alps. I just love these to pieces. They're the first generation of Alps' clicky switches, and they were used in a wide variety of boards, basically anything Alps made that was clicky, in the late 80s. They were soon replaced by a series of progressively simplified white Alps switches, and as more or less universally acknowledged that the blue Alps were better than any of the white revisions as the key feel got less refined over time. Some people do actually prefer white Alps over blue ones, but of course you need to factor in the condition of the boards you're comparing between, and white Alps boards tend to be younger than blue Alps ones. As it happens, this keyboard was new old stock when I got it, so it's absolutely pristine, and this is crucial to why it's so good, as Alps switches are extremely sensitive to dirt, dust, and even use. Still, it gives a splendid demonstration of how good Alps can be when you do find them in immaculate condition. The key feels very nicely balanced with a medium stiff weighting of 65 grams of force at the tactile bump. They're nicely tactile, but not too tactile, it's just a nice little sharp bump and then it's fairly light travel afterwards. They're smooth too, possibly because at this period in time they still use lubricants on their clicky switches. Overall it's a delicious enough key feel, but then again the same thing can be said of its contemporary linear and tactile counterparts, green and orange Alps respectively. But for me the thing that sets these blue Alps apart from those, as well as from all other switches ever produced, or at least the ones I know of, is the sound that they make. Now, Alp switches are already known for the delicious typing noises they make, especially the older generations of switches, but these blue ones, man. Nowadays everybody's going on about Cherry MX Blue and their ilk, and I mean that's fair enough, MX Blue is infinitely easier to get hold of than Blue Alps, but they do make Cherry sound like nails on a fucking chalkboard, let me show you.
Honestly, the key feels outstanding, but the sound alone makes these switches worth checking out in my opinion. Hence, of course, why they're in the intro to my videos now. The construction of this keyboard is pretty damn good with a thick plastic case and a metal mounting plate, but of the three Blue Alps boards I own, it's actually the worst built as the Datacomp and the Northgate both feature a thick metal backplate and a very taut rigid metal chassis. Not to say that the Acer is built like crap, in fact it's quite the opposite, it's just that the other two are possibly the best built Alps keyboards that I know of. The Northgate especially is just ridiculous, I mean, what the hell, this thing is completely unyielding. See, when you have a taut, heavy chassis like the Northgate, the part of the typing sound that's caused by the slide is bottoming out, in other words, the switch clack, is attenuated and the clicker becomes relatively louder, although the overall noise level is still reduced. I'll be honest, although they both sound amazing, I think the plastic case of the Acer sounds slightly better than the metal Northgate one. In fact, this is probably my best sounding keyboard around. Many people have done custom builds with these switches and they put them in a tiny chassis with an open case and the sound is just not as good in my opinion. These bastards were just made to be in old keyboards it seems. <laughs> The rest of the keyboard is fairly typical in terms of build quality, it's got small flip out feet at the rear and a coiled cable with a 5 pin DIN plug at the end. Slightly more unusual features include this 3 position ATXT switch labelled 1, 2 and 3 and a 5 position cable gutter which is pretty cool. And while we're at the rear, here is the model sticker of the keyboard. Although it doesn't say it on here, it's from 1988. Also, being from so early in Acer's lifetime, it still bears the original Acer Diamond logo. The keycaps are a bit of a mystery. Acer used the type of printing on many of the keyboards that are analysed and found to have elements of pad printing, lasering and dye sublimation, but it didn't appear to be any of them. This one has a slight artefact on the numpad 7 cap though, which is probably a factory defect, but it might suggest silkscreen printing. This is what it looks like when I put it under a microscope and it does make it look like some form of silkscreen printing, but unlike all other silkscreen printing I've seen, the lettering is absolutely 100% flat and the texture on it looks completely identical to the rest of the cap. It doesn't appear to be a separate entity at all. In the end, it's still an enigma to me. I mean, it could be printed using fucking black magic for all I know. Whatever it is, the lettering is quite sharp and the font is very distinct, instantly recognisable. It's okay, I prefer Helvetica, but I like these three keys here. What I do know is that the caps themselves are made out of thin ABS and they're probably the weakest aspect about the board. I mean, the caps aren't terrible or anything, but they're not great either. There were models that came with double shot ABS keycaps instead, which is a lot better because double shot lettering is razor sharp, high contrast and it doesn't wear off. It was previously thought that the system model KB101AS was the model that came with those caps, but these have since been found without double shot lettering, so that appears to not be the case. Now one final remark, and that's about the layout. Alps Electric made loads of different keyboards during the late 80s and as I mentioned before they stuck these switches in loads of them, but still the Acer has a specific appeal to many that many other Blue Alps boards don't have and that is the layout. See, apart from the lack of Windows keys, which obviously hadn't been invented at this time yet, it's one of the very few Blue Alps keyboards that came with a straight ANSI layout. This was a pretty modern thing at the time these switches were around, and as a result, most Blue Alps boards used all the layouts, like the AT or even XT layout, or commonly the Asian layout with a big-ass enter and a small backspace key. 
The supreme irony behind this is while this ANSI layout is one of the things that makes this model of keyboard in particular very desirable even compared with other Blue Alps boards, I'm one of the few people that actually dislikes the ANSI layout. I once remarked that the only thing I'd trade this one for was a KB102A, which is the ISO equivalent, but by now me and this board have so much history that I wouldn't trade it even for that nowadays. <laughs> So, concluding, if you want a straight ANSI keyboard with Blue Alps and you don't want to do a switch transplant into a Dell Bigfoot or something similar, this is one of your very few options. I don't care for the layout myself, but it features excellent build quality and the switches are just absolutely the tits. They were my favourite switches when I did the first video two and a half years ago and despite all the amazing switches I've got to know since, they still are to this day. Fuck. Yeah. One final note is that if you haven't tried them yet and you want to go Blue Alps, it's probably best to get a White Alps board first and see if you like them, as Blue Alps are basically the same as White Alps but just a bit more refined. If you don't like White Alps, you won't like Blue either, and if you do, you will. And besides, White Alps are much cheaper and easier to get hold of, so before you splash a million billion into the Blueies, you might want to have a go at the White ones first. That said, as always with Alps, what Whatever board you go for, make sure it's super duper clean. I just can't overstate how much of a difference having a pristine board versus a slightly dirty one makes when it comes to ALP switches. You have been warned. Also, please bear in mind that most boards that came with Blue Alps also later came with other switches. Especially Chikoni keyboards like this KB5161 had this. This model could come with Blue Alps, White Alps, Blue Cherries, several types of Cherry clones, Amber Omrons and Mitsumi Miniature Mechanical switches. So always check for a photo of the switches. That's it for this video, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.